We're in? Yep. We are in. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to, you know, the very exciting session. So what I would like to say is that Elsa, I would like to thank very much the EAS for the support and also the uh, friendship uh, collaboration. So that's why we put this session at this part. Uh, very much uh, honor and also thankful to uh, the president of EAS. So let me, together with me, would be Ray Santos from Philippines, and he would introduce our uh, speaker for this very important and very exciting session. Please, uh, Ray. Thank you, Susan. Good afternoon to everybody. It's uh, indeed the pleasure for me to be able to introduce a uh, well-known speaker we're going to have this afternoon. He's Andrea Petrabisa, who was born in Pisa, Italy, where he, received, where he received a medical degree in 1984. He actually continued his education as general surgeon at the University of Pisa, subsequently at the University of Chicago as research fellow. He has trained in MIS at Nine Wells Hospital, Dundee, Scotland, under the chair of Professor Sir Alfred Koshiri. He was appointed Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of Pisa and became full professor in 2010, where he currently served as a Director of General Surgery and the head of the Department of Oncology. He is also the current, the current president of the European Association of Endoscopic Surgeons, or the EAES. His main research interest has always been in the field of technology for surgery. He's the author of almost 170 peer-reviewed articles with an age index of 33. He's a fellow currently of the American College of Surgeons, the European Surgery Association, honorary member of the Malta Surgical Society and the Korean Society of Endoscopic and Laparoscopic Surgeons. Ladies and gentlemen, with honor, I'd like to present to you Dr. Andrea Petrabisa, who is going to talk on something very interesting. The next black elephant. He'll tell us what it means. Andrea? Well, you come uh, in. Thank, you. thank you, Ray, and uh, thank you, for Sutep, for, for your kind words. You, you forgot to mention the most important thing. We are good friends. And uh, <laughs> this is what matters at the end of the day. Uh, needless to say, I feel privileged uh, on behalf of the European Association for Endoscopic Surgery uh, for this honor. Uh, to deliver a very short talk today. Actually, no one has ever complained on a talk being too short, and, um, and following that line, I, I've tried to be very, very short. Um, this, this difficult uh, times we are all living that forces us to a remote uh, connection um, has also some uh, good points. And uh, the good point has been that uh, uh, we have never been as close as now, uh, even though virtually. And in fact, my good friend Sutep, uh, we have been connected on a weekly basis throughout the hardest time of, of COVID, together with uh, SAGES, together with uh, K-cells, and, uh, and many other associations of endoscopic surgery worldwide. So we have been connected through Zoom uh, every week uh, to provide our members the best possible uh, information to cope with this disaster. And I think that has been extremely useful and kept, uh, kept us close, and I would say closer than before. So that's a paradox of uh, COVID. Uh, we are uh, closer but separated, uh, and that's a good point. So. Uh, um, the, uh, the title of my very short lecture is uh, The Next Black Elephant. Um, um, and uh, I will not discover what that means um, because the video says it all. So um, I will ask the, uh, the, the people in the backstage uh, if they can run uh, the video for, for us, please. Some have called COVID-19 a black swan, an unlikely, unexpected event with huge ramifications. But the truth is that many had anticipated that this could happen, 
and experts epidemiologists and virologists knew the breakout of a pandemic was just a matter of time. It's very easy to talk about all the things we need in our daily life. Better equipment, better training, more OR time. We focus very, very hard on the small obstacles. We magnify them until they fill our field of vision. And all for one reason, so that we don't have to see the huge elephant in the room. This global calamity of COVID-19 is an example of a black elephant. A black elephant is a cross between a black swan and the elephant in the room. A looming disaster that is visible to everyone, still no one wants to address it until it happens. When black elephants hit, we claim they were black swans. No one could have predicted. But in fact, they were black elephants, very visible and predictable. Black elephants exist in any sector in which inertia, denial, and other fear-based drivers are stronger than the desire to take action involving significant change. Post-COVID world is inevitable. How we shape it is not. And perhaps we can avoid the hit of some future black elephant. This is a moment when we can take a breath and look into the distance to imagine what the world of surgery will look like in the coming years and how we want to shape our future. What if this moment is in just one tragedy in the history of mankind, not just another pandemic soon to be forgotten, but a defining moment? What if in 10 or 50 years time, when we look back on this crisis, we realize it was a turning point? To kickstart a solution, we must recognize that our primary focus on short-term growth was misplaced and instead hone in on the well-being of people and the environment. Other indicators fail to measure and therefore cannot tell us if our health services are functioning, if we are living within our planetary boundaries, if people are being treated equally and with respect. Let's start thinking about how we can create a more inclusive, equitable and sustainable future for our profession. Let's start thinking about how we can best recover from the lockdown while paying attention to the next black elephant. Times of stress are also times for growth. COVID-19, which was transmitted from animals to humans, is a direct warning that nature can take no more. While greenhouse gas emissions may dip this year because of lockdowns, we should not celebrate. Surgeons should take action and adopt new strategies on the circular economy concept. Did you know that the healthcare sector accounts for 8% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions? Hospitals are by far the largest contributors of carbon emissions, so that a greener healthcare delivery will have a large positive impact on our environment. Surgeons are best positioned to reduce the negative impact our practice has on the environment by leading the development of hospital initiatives that foster environmentally friendly policies and programs. Plastic, glass, paper, and blue wrap, so common in the OR, are fully recyclable. Nonetheless, the vast majority of these materials still ends up to incinerators or to land filling. 
the EAS this year decided to launch a program called My OR Goes Green. Our target is to promote environmental sustainability for surgical practice by encouraging a responsible consumption of disposables. We need to build a culture of respect for the environment in the OR and to partner with producers of medical devices. I finally call on everyone to work together to protect the nature that supports us all. The stronger our planet's life support systems are, the better human health and wealth will be. We now know which is going to be the next black elephant. Our top problems are indifference, selfishness, greed, and apathy. To deal with those, we need a cultural transformation. And I trust that together, surgeons can take this challenge and make the world a better place to be. Thank you. Wow. Very, yeah. very amazing. touch and amazing um, talk. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. It's an eye opener. <laughs> no, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't come, uh, to be honest, from me, uh, but it comes from my residents. Uh, they, uh, uh, younger people, they have a, a different uh, sensibility to uh, environmental uh, topics than, than we, my generation, had. Uh, for us, is somehow natural to throw away all the consumables that comes to our hands. But uh, new uh, medical students and, and new residents, they, they came to me and said, but professor, you know, where all this stuff is going to after surgery? We do a lap coli and we fill up uh, a couple of black beans. Where do this stuff ends up? Uh, and uh, we find out it goes to incinerators. Uh, and that's a tremendous amount of CO2. We need to do something. If we don't do anything, uh, someone will do that. You know, by the time it's not me, the, 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 the chief of the unit, but one of those residents will become the chief of the unit. Uh, they will make the change. So we need to anticipate this trend and try to do something now. Uh, I think uh, that uh, spreading this uh, knowledge is relevant and is what uh, societies like uh, ELSA and like EAS must do in the first place. And we also have the power to partner with the industry and make sure they pay additional attention to uh, circular economy uh, by providing us uh, materials which is compostable, which, is, which can be dismantled and recycled. And we also need to, to operate uh, separate sorting in the OR, like we do in our houses. You know, we, we all do separate sorting and separate collection. Uh, that has to be done in the OR as, as well. And all the plastics, all the uh, metals, all the uh, paper material can be recycled. Um, it takes an effort, but it has to be done if we want to avoid the black elephant. Yeah, yes, the term yeah, green yeah. OR is really nice. Okay. So I think um, the uh, EAS Go Green program is very uh, initiative, and this is what I mean. Any uh, personnel or any uh, society uh, should be. Uh, looking in it and also uh, take responsibility. Yes, you're right. Now I can see uh, the the black, very huge elephant that uh, been you know uh, waiting or uh, around so circulating around us. But anyway, the idea of uh, launching the program is uh, one thing that is very important. And uh, I think. Uh, your talk, it's very much inspiring uh, people, especially for Elsa. We would like to also thanks 
for EAS for you know yes exactly exactly uh, friendship that we have but the work that we do so we for sure uh, soon will be gathering and celebrating and also you know it's time for us to be relaxed and enjoy with highly responsibility to this uh, environment thank you very much uh, Andrea thank you, thank you yes so Ted, yeah. I know you are a runner, so I will send you a, an EAS t-shirt with the Mayo Argos Green Program logo on it. Well, thank you very much. That would be lovely. I will do that and campaign here in Asia for, you know, uh, our site. So exactly, I love the idea and also the, the future should be, you know, beautiful and we go green and we, we should be, you know, um, uh, building the future for the next generation to be, you know, like what we have. So, uh, Ray, I think um, this session is amazing session. I mean, uh, the right. wisdom that uh, we have uh, right now, it's very much important and very inspiring. Uh, at this point, uh, on behalf of ELSA, I would like to express our sincere thanks to the president of EAS for giving us the honor and also sharing with us the wisdom and the uh, the um, initiative that uh, you're gonna do. So at this point, uh, once again, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>